So this section is going to be about adding your satellite imagery to Inkscape so we can start tracing out our spline. So we're actually going to be doing some things that are going to make you progress in your course building process here. So let's go back into Inkscape, open up Inkscape, and open up a brand new blank canvas. And you can see here that I've got this canvas that's in the shape of an A4 um, piece of paper, you know, eight by five by 11, um, and everything kind of defaulted. We should have our stroke and fill here. We should have our layers tab available. Um, and what we're going to do here, we're going to open up our one of our satellite overlays. So let's go to file, open, and then you need to go to the directory where you put your overlays. Now, for me, I followed everything that was recommended in the document. So if you go to our projects or your courses, your height map directory, for me, it's in this overlays folder. And I've got my Rock Creek, it's the name of my course, Bing, is my inner, my Rock Creek, Google inner, and then remember, I've got my outers as well. We are just concerned about inners at this point, because that's where our golf course is going to be located. So let's open up my Rock Creek Bing Inner, and it's the JPEG version, not the TIFF. And I'm going to open that up, and I'm going to have a little pop-up. It's going to take a second because it's a really big uh, image. And it's going to open up. It's thinking. It's still thinking. I'm going to pause while it's thinking. All right, so you're going to get this pop-up, and it's going to ask you for some import settings. Just click OK. You can accept the defaults. And you can see my image starts to form here. So my image is put over here in a new layer called image, and I can hide that layer. But if I zoom out here just a tab and turn that back on, what I want to make sure of is a couple of different things. First of all, let's go to File, Document Properties. And this window is going to pop up. We need to make sure that we change everything from pixels to millimeters. Okay, everything for us in Inkscape and in most things, it's going to be scaled to millimeters. One millimeter equals one meter. So in this case, we want to now change this to millimeters and we want to change our canvas size. So when I say canvas size, it's this background here. So this background here, right now, it is 2,100 meters by about 2,100 meters. We need to change that to our terrain size. So if you remember later on or earlier on in Unity, I said, make a note of your terrain size in Unity. So Bryce would have given you that um, if you got him to create your, your, your image, your, your overlay information, and it was in that README file. If you did this in the rot LiDAR to terrain process, the size of your inner is going to be in that uh, the, the, the spreadsheet, and it's also in Unity for your terrain size. For my course, this will be different for yours, it was 1100. Do not copy 1100, it's not going to work for you. You need to have your own terrain size. So that's now 1100 by 1100. I'm going to close this, and now you can see that I've shrunken that a little bit, and if I turn my image back on, well, my image is much bigger than that, so I need to change the, the, the properties of my image. So let me go back to my image. I make sure it's highlighted. And then up here at the top, I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to make sure that I change this to, I need to change my screen here. I need to change this to millimeters here as well. And I'm going to change this to my terrain size. So I got 1100 by 1100. Enter. And now you can see that my canvas, okay, and let me do a zoom up here, show you a little trick, view, zoom, zoom the drawing, it's gonna fit perfectly in here. Now my canvas, okay, this white area, matches my image exactly, and that's what we want. Now let's do a couple of, let's do a little cleanup here. So let me double click on this layer. So remember, layers are just folders, and I'm gonna call this satellite imagery because I'm gonna put another image in here in a second. And I'm gonna go down here to the image that I imported and I'm gonna call this Bing Inner. Let me call this just, actually call this Bing Satellite. So now I have one folder or one layer with one image inside of it. 
So let me highlight that layer again. I'm going to come back up here. Now I'm not going to do an open because if I do open, I'm going to create a whole new file, a whole new Inkscape project. Instead, I'm going to do import because I'm going to import a second image and it's going to put it in this layer. So I'm going to do import. Now I'm going to do my Rock Creek Google Inner. So I double clicked on that. And then I'll get my import settings dialog. There it is. Hit OK. This will take a second to open up. So now I have another image. Ah, but look at this. It came in with the default sizes here. Let me just zoom out a tad so you get an idea of what happened here. And now I have my Google, but ah, man, that's not sized right. So let me help you out here. Let me go to my Bing satellite. Let me hide it. So you now I have my canvas here, and I've got this second image, but we are not sized correctly at all. So if I highlight that image, go back up here to the top, I'm already under millimeters. I need to change this again to my terrain size. My, this is my terrain size. You need to input your correct terrain size, 1100 by 1100, and there we go. Hmm. <clears throat> but wait a second. It's the right size, but Oh, it's not in the right spot, is it? Well, now we're going to come back up here to the top. Let me move my tools around. And I'm going to change my X and Y starting point to 0, 0, so it lines up with the corner down here of my canvas. And now I have my Google image lined up to my canvas. Let's do a little cleanup. Let me double click over here. I'm going to call this Google Satellite. Enter. So now, let me do my view again, zoom. Uh, I'm going to zoom to drawing. Ah, I've got a nice full screen here. And I've got my Google image and my Bing image. And I just turned my Bing image back on and hit it. But wait, I don't see my Bing. What's going on? Ah, it's underneath my Google. So let me zoom in here and let me pick like an area. Uh, this green right here, nice big fat green uh, with a bunker right here as well. And if I turn off my Google, my Bing pops in. So if I toggle my Google on and off, you can see that these images align pretty darn close. So depending on where I'm splining my course, I might want to enable or disable my Google image um, or look at my Bing image, right? Um, and most importantly, though, is that these are aligned correctly. If I toggle these, or if you toggle yours, and they shift dramatically, either you don't have correct overlays, or you might need to play with shifting these around. And this is also going to be why we're only going to spline a few holes first, or one hole, because we're going to take this back into, into Unity, and we need to make sure that everything aligns with our terrain. So. Um, that's why we're only going to do a couple holes first to make sure everything's working correctly. But now you have your satellite images. Let's go up here, do File, Save As. So we want to make sure that we're saving this in the right place. So if we go into our Rock Creek OPCT, OPCD directory, and here into our terrain, we're going to save it in here. It's going to be important because there's some files in that directory that were part of the base package that you're going to need. So let's just call this Rock Creek. This is a type of SVG, and we're going to save it. So now we have our Rock Creek SVG, and we're going to start drawing some splines.